Good morning. How many of you are carrying your iPhone today? This device released five years back has sort of launched a new wave of mobile and uh, mobile technologies. What's happening with mobile is really uh, pretty breathtaking. <clears throat> when we started Poshmark about a year and a half back, it was unclear how much transactions, how much buying would happen through the phone. And we've been very pleasantly surprised in terms of how much and how many things are being bought on the phone. Everything from you know, shoes and fashion to cars and, uh, and even shampoo is being bought on the phones. When you think of the phone, it really is sort of a, a very, very different way of approaching how um, electronic commerce is going to evolve. Phone brings a very uh, simple and unique dimension to your life, which is it's with you all the time. Internet in its first generation allowed us to connect with everyone across the world, allowed us to sort of buy things, interact with things that we couldn't yet access. In the last four or five years, we've seen the rise of social, where suddenly people are connected to each other, you know, using Facebook, using Twitter, and more recently, um, using Instagram. Mobile takes this sort of another level higher, which is it allows you to be continuously and perpetually connected to people. There is not a second where you don't have your phone. In fact, probably half of you are looking at your phone instead of listening to me right now. So um, what, what I want to talk a little bit about is what we are doing at Poshmark in terms of using phone as really the focal point of redefining how women in particular connect with each other, how fashion and fashion communities evolve. Now, I'll share a little bit about what Poshmark is doing, but hopefully use this to provoke new ways of thinking about the phone and about mobile experience. At Poshmark, what we're doing is really building a marketplace for fashion. So um, for all the women in the audience, right, when you wake up in the morning and you look at your closet full of fashion, is your typical reaction, pain, you know, what can I wear today? What is sort of there that I can actually put on today? That's a, that's a particular conundrum that women go through every morning. Our goal and mission is to make that, instead of it being pain, sort of looking at it kind of going, well, this is a beautiful closet, and now I have a closet full of money as opposed to a closet that causes me pain, and allows me to sort of take an item out of the closet, put it on Poshmark, and then get something new. So your closet becomes something that is both a shopping mall, but also an ATM machine, a teller machine from which you can withdraw money and actually use that to then shop more and, and buy different kinds of fashion. The three principles we've used in building Poshmark is simple. One of the basic things about the phone is it's very hard to do complex things. So it forces you to really think about everything at a much simpler level. And that's why you're seeing that when a lot of web companies and traditional internet businesses are moving towards the phone, it's a hard thing because you really have to start to think about what are the functionalities that you take from your website that you can keep on the phone. And, and our mission has been, because we started on the phone, that even as we are building anything, it has to work on this form factor. It has to work on the phone. It can work on the iPad, it can work on the web, but everything that you can do should be available on your iPhone or your, in the future, your Android. It's social, it's all about people connecting to each other, and ultimately, obviously, it's on the phone. So just to give you a sense, um, we launched the app about, I guess, about nine months back, and what we've seen is that women are using it and really deeply engaging with this platform. So our average user opens the app seven to eight times a day, and she spends somewhere between 23 to 25 minutes, some, some of them close to half an hour a day in the app. That's an average. Our top users spend over five hours a day in the app. And these people who are sort of engaged, the community members, are really generating, last month they generated over a million likes and comments. If you add up all of the social interactions, it'll actually come to over two million social interactions that were put in the platform. A platform that's designed fundamentally for e-commerce is really allowing women to connect with each other at a deeper, more meaningful level. And I think part of it is the product design, but part of it is the power of mobile. 
And the fact that you can access it at any point in time anywhere, the fact that everything becomes much faster, much simpler on mobile. The heart of Poshmark is a very simple selling and buying experience. In order to sell something, all you have to do is to take a couple of photos from your iPhone, tap a few buttons, add, add some things, you know, like the price you want to sell it at, what the item is all about, and pretty soon your, your handbag, your shoe, your dress is on the market. The, the first photo that's part of your app is called a cover shot. So that is really uh, the, the beautiful picture that you look at. And the feed, the collection of these cover shots, becomes sort of uh, this interactive experience, which is like a magazine. Poshmark as a platform handles all of the payments. We send you a shipping label, so as a user, you don't have to worry about paying for shipping. You still have to ship the item, but we take care of all of the payment related to shipping. We email you a label, and we also handle all of customer service. So think of it as an experience which is like Amazon meets eBay. On the front end, you have all the simplicity of an Amazon experience. On the back end, you have the beauty of eBay, which is inventory-less commerce. You have constantly changing inventory and a fast-growing community in the platform. And the result has been a growing community of really passionate users. And this is built not just by technology, but by really touching all of these users. For the first six months of our application, I actually personally answered every single email from the customers. Now it's gotten too big for me to personally do that. We have a team of about six community ambassadors, and we are growing that team very rapidly. And these people uh, engage with our community members every day, constantly, through email, through Twitter, through Facebook, through Instagram, through phone, through chat, whatever communication and channels they have. We also go out and throw offline parties where we actually meet our community. We had one in Miami recently, and I'm going to share a little video where we recorded some of the members. And these women span the gamut. So we have a 19-year-old student who's really paying for her college using Poshmark. She's selling stuff on Poshmark and using that pay to pay for her college. Alicia is a user out of Miami. She's a mother of three kids, and after she had three kids, she became a model. And she has stopped going to the malls and really using Poshmark as a primary shopping experience. Uh, Poshmark widower, if you look at Tracy, she's a game product manager out in San Francisco, and her husband calls himself the Poshmark widower where really when a Poshmark interaction starts, he kind of loses her, even if they're middle of a date. She's gone into Poshmark and starts to Poshmark. So with that, let me play, play for you a couple of minute video so you can kind of see and hear from our users what they think of Poshmark. Can we get the video played? I love all the... User-friendly everything. There's people <laughs> from everywhere. For you can find the rarest things from like the randomest closet. The simplicity of uh, listing an item straight from my closet, straight on my cell phone, and within minutes it could even be purchased. I like that I could sell to buy. <laughs> yeah. I love buying. Yeah, I like that it's online and it's also on your iPhone, and that I could use it while I'm in class, and I can actually shop and find people that um, have similar styles to the, what I have. I love that you can shop <laughs> and get amazing deals on some like really great items. I just love that you go in there and shop and also you can get rid of some of the things you have in your closet as well. I love that it's a community and people kind of make friendships and people have similar styles and they start to talk and then they start to talk about their lives so it's it's a much more integrated experience than any other um, it's a social social shopping. I honestly do it 24 hours a day. I do it at work. <laughs> at work? At work, at school, at home, when I wake up, when I go to sleep. <laughs> in my dreams. Yeah. When I'm on my couch and in between commercials. Yeah. The first thing I do in the morning when I roll over is like literally look at my Poshmark notifications. <laughs> Me too. You always somehow yeah. check everything at once when yeah, you're leaving Facebook, your phone. Instagram, Poshmark. Just as every time people look at their phones, they check their text messages or their Facebook, I check my Poshmark. <laughs> 
My shorts, my favorite ever, <laughs> ever. I love them. I have purchased this bracelet from Poshmark uh, okay. from Walking in Wonderland, and I love this bracelet, yes. actually. I wear it ac practically every day. I actually am wearing the shoes right now, so I'm going to take these off and show them to you. Please do show. They're probably about six inches, which is not something a 5'9 person needs, but I love these. I got a great deal on these and another pair. The seller was awesome, so fantastic find right on Poshmark. I actually bought this shirt off of Poshmark <laughs> that I'm wearing today. I noticed that yes. when you walked in. Yes, I bought this from Poshmark. I'm like addicted to it. Like half of my wardrobe is from Poshmark. <laughs> you don't even go to the mall anymore. Don't right? even go to the mall anymore. I haven't. I've been on the app for maybe about five months now, and I haven't been shopping in the mall at all. There's like no point. You get all the great stuff on Poshmark. <laughs> So hopefully they give you a little bit of a sense of what women are doing. They're really buying and selling everything. And more recently, we've also started to see makeup come online, which we are still trying to decide whether it's something we allow or not. But really, it's something that people are truly passionate about. They're connecting. And as you can see from one of the women, it's not just about the item. She remembered exactly the person she bought it from. So ultimately, one of the, the core binding principles of building Poshmark is people. And it's really understanding each person, each human being, and connecting with each of these people. What we are also doing is really looking at how you find items. So if you look at eBay and Amazon, the foundation of these giants has been search. And we believe there's a significant opportunity to build a scalable business around the discovery experience. So really, we're using discovery as a foundation for commerce and using social feeds to build out a very scalable discovery um, product. But we also look at things that are beyond sort of social discovery, things where we have to find in fashion around themes, you know, around sort of the latest trends, around designers. People may want to shop Prada and Chanel. People may want to shop zebra stripes. People may want to shop the latest spring trends. So we created this concept of a virtual shopping party which is a very unique architecture where we have women in real time. So these are women who are actually gathering at a specific determined time. Typically, our parties happen one in the morning, one in the evening. We'll actually be launching an afternoon party soon. And women are gathering around and buying and selling to the themes that are specified for these parties in real time. So what you find with these parties is it gives a very unique way of bringing people together. Sort of, in a way, think of it as like a flash sale, you know, something you see with guilt and others. But also, uh, really, a chat session, kind of a talk session, or a tweet up. So it's a, it's a bunch of different things combined into something which is a very unique social paradigm for shopping, real time. And what this has done is, it has allowed our community to scale and connect and discover new people. So you, what you find is, in a typical party, six, eight months back, we would have maybe 50 to 100 items that were listed. Today, last night's party, for example, had 26,000 items listed. In fact, the scale of these parties has become so big that we had to introduce new features into the product just to manage both the scale as well as the discovery within a party. They also allow uh, people to come and shop against a very specific theme, but also help them connect with each other in a deeper, more meaningful way. So for example, it gives a way for new sellers to find new buyers, for new buyers to connect with different people who may be already part of the community, and then for people to sort of not only build out their shopping network, but then also be able to connect to new things and new products within the uh, platform. So ultimately, when you tie all of these pieces together, the real opportunity that mobile gives you is the ability to sort of create this platform that is with the user everywhere. And that allows you to innovate around the kind of experiences you are creating. A posh party experience, if you think about it, trying to do it without the phone, would have forced people to sit at their desk or sit at their sofas. Here, our women and our community are actually able to engage in the party no matter where they are. So for example, if a party started 
and you know, Bosch Marco was, was available in Spain, you could actually participate in the party while listening to my talk. You could go shop, you could share a few of your items that you'd pre-listed. You could actually be in a restaurant going out for dinner and you can participate in a party. That thing is something very unique that mobile delivers. So I, what I'd encourage you as you look at different models of e-commerce and different ways of thinking about mobile is, there are certain things which are very obvious for mobile, you know, the local aspect, the fact that you can actually tie it to a specific geography and location. But there are many other things that phone and mobile as a platform makes feasible. And really thinking about these new things and using them to integrate them into new kinds of experiences uh, gives mobile a very powerful connection. The second thing is it gives you a constant communication approach to the people that you're connected to. So the fact that this phone is with us all the time allows the kind of interaction that these women are talking about. The fact that Alicia can wake up in the bed and interact with Poshmark the first thing is something she wouldn't have done if it was traditional internet. She would have to get out of bed, walk up to the computer, and then take a look at it. Here she can just you know, pick up the phone and engage with it. What that also means is it's instant communication. And that has massive ramifications on e-commerce and sort of many of the things that, you know, over the last 10 years we've been thinking about with e-commerce, mobile is bringing them to an explosion point. And if you look at the scale of e-commerce and scale of offline transactions in U.S., that number is still in single digits as part of the overall e-commerce market. With mobile, and the ability of mobile to really go between offline and online constantly, it allows a massive inflection point for e-commerce and commerce to blend together. Another dimension is that the effect of mobile on physical offline retail is even more dramatic. Not just in a negative way, not just in a fearful way, not just in a way that you think about where you sort of say, okay, this is something which is going to only negatively affect something. I think there's an opportunity to significantly improve that experience. We use offline events today to really engage our community in a deeper, meaningful way. So, for example, we will take these posh parties out on the road. We had one in Miami a couple of weeks back. We threw one in New York, in Chicago. We will invite the local fashion community and we'll throw this uh, posh party. And these women are in interacting and engaging in real life setting, but they're also connected through the phones to a virtual party that's happening where they're connected to women across America. So you would be engaged with someone in Alaska, someone in uh, California, and you could actually be partying out of Miami. So that gives you, again, the ability to take offline, online, and blend it into a seamless, passionate experience. And that's really fundamentally, I think, how you can create a very deeply engaged community, a community that scales, and a meaningful interaction where real life interaction scale into something that is an online interaction which then translates into commerce and translates back into development of the community. And that's the paradigm that we are seeing at Poshmark, and it's working and the community is scaling. Um, we're now at just a few hundred thousand users at this point, but the platform continues to scale every day, and we continue to refine the interactions and add new features to the platform. With that, I'd like to open it up for uh, any questions you might have, and please use one of the mics, uh, as I was told, in terms of asking a question. Thanks, Manis. Eh. Manis ha dado paso a turno de preguntas. Es muy sencillo, simplemente levantar la mano y el micrófono llega a vosotros. Um, thanks for the presentation first. Uh, that said, what, one basic question I have, why in uh, uh, your platform only address, the say, the value proposition only to women and not to men? Uh, why that? Uh, why do you decide, why well, you get to exclude men from your value <laughs> proposition? Thank you. Um, so it's, it's based on certain uh, core principles. It's not that we want to discriminate against men or other um, sort of kinds of people who exist in the world, but generally uh, the way women shop is quite different. And initially our focus, at least for the first year, has been uh, to really cater to that experience, which is based more around discovery. For men, typically, you know, I would say eight or nine out of ten times for men, 
Shopping is more a search experience. It's, you know, my, the typical classic example I give uh, is, you know, you could have a couple of women walking into the store and they could be wanting to shop for a brown bag. They could spend an hour together, come out with a pair of black shoes, a blue dress, and some yellow tops, and no brown handbag, and they'll be very happy. That's a discovery experience. The reason it happened was they walked in, and the black shoes were on 70% sale, so they had to be bought. And then they walked around, and suddenly they picked up a yellow dress, and the other woman said, it looks absolutely stunning, and they were able to buy that. And suddenly, the black shoes, which was sort of an idea anyway, was thrown out, and different items were purchased. If you take the same thing, first of all, two men never go to shop together. A single man will walk into a store. He's going to be ultra-focused on buying a set of blue shirts that he needs to buy. If he doesn't get them in 10 minutes, he's frustrated, he walks out. If he gets them, he'll buy three of the shirts and walk out. It's a very, very different experience, very different paradigm of shopping. Hello? Hello here? <laughs> Are you there? Okay. Hello. Yep. I'd like to know how you get the money from this app here. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> I'd like to know how you get the money. Sure. Um, so the way the money works is, uh, let's say you have a handbag listed for $50. The woman will pay Poshmark $50 through a credit card or through credits that she has, plus a small shipping fee. We take that, we'll email the seller a shipping label, which is a PDF file. The seller prints it out, mails this handbag to the buyer. Once the buyer receives the bag, she looks at it, and she has a blue button, which is called an accept button. She accepts the purchase. At that time, we release the payment to the seller. The payment is deposited in their Poshmark account. For a lot of women, they'll use that money to shop back on Poshmark, but they can also press a button and withdraw it and will deposit it in their bank account or send them a check. So it's very easy. The, the way the platform is designed is it protects the buyer and it protects the seller in the sense that if seller has shipped the item, they're assured that if the item is no problem, they will get their money. Same thing for the buyer. If there's a problem with the item, she just tells us there's a problem. We ask her to take a couple of photos, let us know. Then we send her a return label. She ships the item back to the seller. We track the item. When the seller receives it, we give her entire $50 back and as well as the shipping fee. So we eat the cost of return shipping in that case. So it's, it's protected on both sides, but the money movement is fairly simple and managed all through the Poshmark platform. Okay, thank you. Uf, a ver, tenemos para, para dos preguntas. Por favor, Hi. Os que os levantaseis. No sé dónde estáis. ¿Por dónde? Ahí. Gracias. Hi. You were mentioning that you are Apple uh, iPhone uh, application, and I have a question regarding the uh, Android. Uh, first one is, why did you choose uh, uh, iPhone? It's just because number of users. And the second related with this one is, is uh, iPhone people more related to fashion than Android people? It's just because, I don't know, maybe men are, I don't, I don't know if there, is there any kind of uh, people that likes iPhone and people like Android? Thank you. Um, so we, when we made the decision to go for um, iPhone, there were two reasons. One was simplicity of the platform. It was a consistent single platform. The display, the quality of camera, etc., cetera, was, uh, was very good. Again, remember this was about 15 months back or 16 months back when we first decided to embark on this development. The second thing was predominantly when we surveyed women and looked at women, a lot of the young women were carrying iPhone as their smartphone. Situation today is different, and we will be developing an Android version, um, hopefully by early next year, and shipping it out. Android, the only challenge with Android still remains the consistency of the platform, although I would say that iPhone itself is starting to become a little fragmented with the mini iPad, big iPad, iOS, etc. So I think um, that's one of the challenges of mobile is making um, your product really work beautifully in different form factors, and, and it's something that we work on constantly. Creo que había alguna pregunta más um, por aquí, por esta ¿Dónde está? When it comes to Spain? When, when it comes to Spain? Poshmark. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Um, don't know yet. Uh, we're still sort of focused on the U.S. Um, the, the international plans are still a little bit, we haven't really announced any international plans yet. 
Había una pregunta más por aquí, ¿no? Tenía sí. Vamos a repartir un poco las preguntas porque si no va a ser un poco difícil. Um, could you please share with us like um, main mistakes or key learning points as from when you started till today? Sure. A um, couple of things. The first thing we did was we used Facebook Connect as our single login when we first started, and that was a huge mistake. Probably in the first five months, we must have lost half the people who downloaded our app couldn't log in, and we got tons of negative reviews on the App Store. When we launched the non-Facebook-based login, which is an email-based login, suddenly our conversion rate of download went from 45-50% to 75-80%. So 80% of the users who actually download the app become users of Poshmark. Uh, so that was a very significant thing. Um, second thing which is there is we didn't launch with any search because we were so focused on discovery and we again got a huge backlash. So I think five months into the platform, we launched search um, in the platform and that has been uh, quite powerful and quite useful. Although I would say search is not a predominant way in which people um, use Poshmark, it's still a big thing. Uh, the third piece, which is um, a, a key thing, is in terms of just building out um, reporting features, community moderation features. We just released them in the last couple of months. That has been something that we didn't expect people to get so deeply engaged that moderation would be necessary so quickly. Hi. Hello, I've got a question. How did you kick off to achieve your traction um, leading up to building your critical mass? The early days, we, we really focused on um, building our community really one person at a time. So we connected with a lot, lot of local um, fashion folks within the San Francisco community, which is not a very large community, but worked with local uh, bloggers, reached out to bloggers in LA. So just working at a grassroots level. Uh, and reached out through our personal networks. Then the next phase, we used a little bit of PR, we still use PR, and then used offline parties. So we started to throw offline events, both in San Francisco, LA, again, in closer geographies, and then we expanded to Texas, Chicago, New York, Miami. Um, so, so we really believe in sort of using both online marketing, but then using a high touch where we actually go and meet with people and connect with them as a core way of building out our, uh, our early traction. Okay, no more questions. Okay, thank Great. you. Marius. Thank you. Space for fashion. So um, for all the women in the audience, right, when you wake up in the morning and you look at your closet full of fashion, is your typical reaction pain? You know, what can I wear today? What is sort of there that I can actually put on today? That's a, that's a particular conundrum that women go through every morning. Our goal and mission is to make that, instead of it being pain, sort of looking at it kind of going, well, this is a beautiful closet, and now I have a closet full of money as opposed to a closet. It allowed us to connect with everyone across the world, allowed us to sort of buy things, interact with things that we couldn't yet access. In the last four or five years, we've seen the rise of social, where suddenly people are connected to each other, you know, using Facebook, using Twitter, and more recently, um, using Instagram. Mobile takes this sort of another level higher, which is it allows you to be continuously and perpetually connected to people. There is not a second where you don't have your phone. In fact, probably half of you are looking at your phone instead of surprised in terms of how much and how many things are being bought on the phone. Everything from you know, shoes and fashion to cars and, uh, and even shampoo is being bought on the phones. When you think of the phone, it really is sort of a, a very, very different way of approaching how um, electronic commerce is going to evolve. Phone brings a very uh, simple and unique dimension to your life, which is it's with you all the time. Internet in its first generation is interesting to me right now. So um, what, what I want to talk a little bit about is what we are doing at Poshmark in terms of using phone as really the focal point of redefining how women in particular connect with each other, how fashion and fashion communities evolve. I'll share a little bit about what Poshmark is doing, but hopefully use this to provoke new ways of thinking about the phone and about mobile experience. 
At Poshmark, what we're doing is really building a marketplace. Good morning. How many of you are carrying your iPhone today? This device released five years back has sort of launched a new wave of mobile and uh, mobile technologies. What's happening with mobile is really uh, pretty breathtaking. <clears throat> when we started Poshmark about a year and a half back, it was unclear how much transactions, how much buying would happen through the phone. And we've been very pleasantly surprised.